What's up, this is Matt Brown, and today in some IoT security news, we are going to take a look at a video and a news article that Lewis Rossman just dropped. So, uh, Lewis Rossman, if you're not familiar with his channel, talks a lot about right to repair, uh, MacBook uh, repair uh, type videos. And he just released a video called Wi-Fi Water Heater Can Be Activated by Anyone Who Knows Your Email. And he uh, talks about this specific Ars Technica article in his video. So I'm going to leave uh, links to both Lewis Rossman's video and the Ars Technica article in the description of this video. But... I wanted to take a look at this video as a hardware hacker, as a hardware bug bounty hunter, and give you my perspective on this story. So, um, the short version of this news article is that there is a tankless water heater that connects to Wi-Fi inside of the customer's home, and that allows for certain control over that, over that tankless water heater remotely, um, through some kind of a mobile application. And uh, the real kicker in this article is uh, just down here a little bit of a way, a little bit. And uh, this is from the, uh, the researcher who discovered all of this about uh, this system in their own home. Um, they said, so it appears that this unauthenticated endpoint, well, kind of put the, in air quotes, unauthenticated. So there's kind of some authentication going on, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what that is. So it appears that this is an unauthenticated endpoint and absolutely anyone on the internet can read all the information about me and my water heater and also set new temperatures for me at any time without needing to know my password. So it doesn't need that user specific password, just the API key which is in the code base and is the same for everyone. So we have a classic case in an IoT system, whether, uh, whether it's hard-coded inside of like the mobile app or the IoT device itself, it really doesn't matter. Um, same, same flaw, right? There's one key that is being used to authenticate all users and therefore we have a uh, poorly implemented authentication system. Uh, in an IoT system. Classic type of flaw that you see all the time, again, whether you're reverse engineering a mobile app or you're extracting firmware and reverse engineering said firmware on an IoT device, you're gonna find these types of hard-coded secrets because they just don't expect you to do the work to look, right? There is this barrier to entry. Uh, I talk about this uh, with people in the hardware bug bounty space um, as opposed to web applications which are very accessible everyone kind of knows how to hack on web applications but when you start moving into that mobile application and especially the hardware space there are lots of hard-coded secrets that are just sitting there in systems because it's hard to do that initial work to break through that initial barrier to get access to to decompile an application to um, maybe un unpin, undo the certificate pinning in a mobile application, or to, uh, to get in the middle of the TLS communications inside of an IoT device. But once you do that, it is really easy to find these hard-coded credentials because they don't think you're going to look. So uh, that's, my, that's my position. That's my opinion on this news article. Feel free to comment down below in this video and tell me what you think about it. Uh, and, and what do you think of Rossman's video? Do you think he's right that some of these systems just shouldn't be designed with internet connectivity in the first place? Thank you and have a good day.